All right, great. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. This is the uh, Shoreline uh, Sprint 16 Sprint Review. Um, and so uh, what I'm showing right now is a document that is our blog post. So it outlines what was our goal for Sprint 16. Um, and these are the things that we had outlined that we wanted to accomplish this sprint. Um, and uh, these are all supporting the same milestone for this entire um, summer um, work cycle. Actually, here, let me be able to see both of those at the same time, if that'll work. Yeah, that works. Um, so, and this all supports the milestone of um, really preparing for future development work that we'll be doing, um, reaching out to stakeholders, uh, doing a lot of the, the back end, um, you know, figuring out of processes and things like that. Um, as well as you know a lot of the, the DevOps work that's being done as part of the DevOps um, uh, project to to manage some of the the infrastructure. Um, so what have we accomplished in the last couple of weeks? Um, so for the first bullet, bullet um, we have come up with short-term workflows for ingesting data into UCSB and UCSD geodata. Um, these are um, just ways for us to work with the developers to get materials in because uh, at this point we we still don't have an automated way for metadata librarians to ingest materials um, and that's fine for the short term um, but it's just having a way for say for myself to prepare some data and metadata to be ingested and then have a way of um, letting say Alex know when the things are ready where they are and then she can ingest them uh, and then and go from there. So we have a we have a process down. Um, and if I could maybe just ask Alex um, where we are with this this first ingest. I know we were having some issues with um, with the ingest. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I got I got pulled in a number of directions. So I I think the last time I was checking, um, I we 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 had. To our background, we had a single uh, shape file that wouldn't ingest after if the rest went in, <laughs> and I managed to get it ingested locally. And then I was going to try again on our staging server, but that's when a bunch of our op stuff <laughs> went on the fritz, and I I couldn't actually access our staging and production systems for almost a week. Uh, so I didn't, I wasn't able to follow up on that again. Uh, but now that I'm back in and now that things are running again, I'll be sure to, um, to do that. But one thing we did discover at least during this mess was that our initial method of parsing the shape files didn't quite work. It was basically designed for the test files. And so we were able to, initially none of them were importing, none of the new batch that Tom provided, uh, but then we were able to update our, our code to, um, to handle that. And now there's just that, that one lingering that since it went in locally, I'm, I'm guessing there's nothing major keeping it out. It might have just been a flake, a fluke, and it'll go in next time. So I will keep you up to date on that. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Sound good. Yeah, and um, yeah, what happened was I, uh, in this particular round, I capitalized ISO instead of lower casing it when I put the ISO files together. Um, and so, you know, it's always little stuff like that that happens with metadata. Uh, you know, and, and then, um, in the first round, the the file name, the shape file name, and the zip file name were the same, but that's not sustainable going forward because we're acquiring these shape files from all over the place, and we don't want to have to rename every single file. Um, but we do the zip file that the file goes in is uh, the call number, basically. Um, so from an organizational perspective, that's that makes more sense to us, and so the code now pulls pulls the name from the zip instead of the the actual shape file. Because we could have, you know, we could, if we're gathering data from multiple counties and we have, you know, parcels 2009, we could have that same file name from three different counties. 
um, but we don't want to have to go in and actually change the, the county's data name. Um, so just by having unique zip file names with the call number for each of those different files, we'll make them unique to go into the system. And, um, and, and it's, a, it's a code that makes sense to us in terms of organization. Okay, um, the next one was uh, determine the look and feel of UCSB geodata. Um, so this one got expanded. Um, as we were uh, discussing it locally here, we determined that, um, that we wanted the UCSB geodata to have a look and feel that was compatible with the other uh, products in the digital library. Um, so, you know, whatever Starlight looks like or, you know, any other interfaces. And so then that conversation even broadened out to, you know, this may also be true at UC San Diego where you have, want to have a common look and feel for all the different products or, you know, or do you, you know, that, that's a conversation to have. Um, and so when we talk to our, um, our folks here about, um, about graphics, uh, they were suggesting that we let them know kind of what our, the, the basic needs are, kind of like, um, like what we think uh, what we would need to standardize on things like um, uh, do we call it login or or log in as two words or you know I forget what the other term was um, you know so you know we should standardize that term and then standardize where it is you know because always in the top right it's the it's the very first thing on the on the right at the top you know those types of things uh, would be good for us to discuss and standardize um, and and once we determine those things, then then the develop then the um, the designers can actually put something together to to see what that looks like. And so um, um, and so this this one little goal has expanded into a much larger conversation that will be um, continuing after this work cycle is over. So this will continue into the next our off cycle work cycle, <laughs> which is. Um, Amy and I will will continue to to do uh, two week sprints during the off cycle, <laughs> in preparation for the next work cycle. So that will continue. Uh, the next thing was um, adding rights metadata field to GeoData interface. Um, so this also got deferred. Um, so uh, we we're participating. Um, actually, Amy, Amy, and I are in a, a Geo Blacklight community uh, group that's um, part of the sprint but will also I think go well beyond this sprint um, and we're looking at like all of the metadata fields in Geo Blacklight um, but our but our key focus right now is on the rights metadata and so we're having really good conversations about you know the various um, rights fields and um, and you know trying to come up with um, what we think are the fields that, that we need and then we can work with the developers to figure out how that can be implemented or if it can be implemented you know those those types of discussions we'll need to have um, and so from that perspective uh, because there there most likely will be some breaking changes that that come from uh, changing metadata um, or if not breaking changes there will be significant changes um, I think what we're planning on is to have these conversations um, and uh, hopefully have a, a revised metadata schema in time for the January Geo Blacklight Community Sprint, at which time they can be incorporated into the next um, uh, version of Geo Blacklight. Um, so, and we're also thinking about having the the uh, geo blacklight metadata schema have its own versioning so you know maybe calling this one aardvark or something like that as opposed to a numbering system have a naming system um, for that so that you know that because the numbering system won't be corresponding with the, the geo blacklight version numbers um, but uh, so there's a lot of work happening there and so we felt that we didn't want to um, it didn't make sense to do a short-term fix because when we started looking into doing a short-term fix it was going to be a lot of work for us to figure out how it would 
you know, like where to pull it from in the metadata and what it would be, um, uh, I mean, what it would be called was pretty easy, but, but in terms of, you know, in looking at all sorts of data, uh, we were finding that, um, you know, user, the, the data, the metadata creators, uh, in, in this case, a lot of the counties were putting it information all over the place. And so we would have to be doing copying and pasting, um, and, and doing a lot of manipulation to get it to work and, and kind of felt like if the community is this serious about uh, making a change um, that there's no point in us doing all of that work when we can wait six months and and follow the community and, and making our stuff standard with the new the new guidelines so um, but our conversations have been really good so I'm, I'm very pleased with how that's going um all right the next one is um determine stakeholder priorities for next development cycle um and so uh we met with stakeholders at, at uc santa barbara and uc san diego and um, had them prioritize what features they felt were important um, and then Amy and I met and went and compared both campuses and we also compared it to work that we had done previously uh, when we were determining what we thought the MVP should look like. And so the results of that I've summarized in this document, uh, let me make that a little larger. Um, and so, so based on all of this, what we've come up with at this point, and again, these aren't, these aren't prioritized, they're just a list of priorities um, that we will, we can rank closer to the next work cycle because we'll need to be having these conversations again um, because things may change in the next couple months um, that will influence what we want to do or not do. Um, but as it stands right now, um, what we'd like to do is have conversations about long-term storage and preservation. You know, where are the uh, original objects going to be sitting? Um, and also have conversations about relationships between objects. Uh, we have a lot of you know, complex collections um, that we want to start having conversations about how do we, how do we um, model those complex relationships within GeoBlacklight. And I think the GeoBlacklight community wants to have those conversations as well, uh, because I think a lot of people are having issues with that. Um, and so, you know, until any of that stuff is put into place and we've had those conversations, we'll pretty much only be ingesting things that are either single objects or just a few objects as part of a collection and not necessarily things with a lot of relationships. We don't want to, uh, we're not going to ingest those because we don't really have a way of uh, making it clear those relationships in the interface. Um, we'd like to add a help page. We think that our users would benefit from having this sooner rather than later um, to start guiding how to use the, the system. Um, this next one, enable systems monitoring for all services with automated feedback. Um, I've already seen this. Um, and Alex, I don't know if this is, um, if this is fully functioning or if that was just a, a test. Um, do you have an update on, on that? Uh, yeah, so that we've, we've implemented kind of some, some monitoring. So it's basically right now we can tell you if the site is inaccessible or not, we have to basic kind of check for um, if the main size there. What we want in the future is more advanced things so that we have a kind of a dashboard where we can uh, see which component is down. Like if, if, if it says GeoServer is, is having trouble, we don't know if that's because of GeoBlacklight, GeoServer, or whatever. So this would in the future, we want to be able to see exactly which component is acting up and to get the error logs. Uh, so we have, yes, we have, so we have some um, kind of preliminary monitoring, but we've got ideas for more um, in the future. And, um, and I probably shouldn't say it's just been completed because, yeah, I think there's, um, you know, a little bit of, of work, but, um, I, I believe that San Diego um, could model the same structure. It's like we wouldn't use the same system, but 
that right. San Diego could model the same structure? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are some, um, some of the th options we're looking at would be ones that we would each install separately, but we could do the same thing as we always do, where we um, have the, the shared configuration and then um, install it into our separate uh, uh, clusters. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll update that uh, after the meeting. Uh, so improve short-term ingest workflow. Um, I think we're already, we're already doing this. Um, and we could uh, revisit that some more. Um, we, uh, I now have diagrams from uh, Berkeley, Colorado, and Cornell. Um, and so um, uh, we have a little more input into, into discussing this, but, uh, but it sounds like um, pretty much what we have is, you know, once, once we can get through one, one ingest, um, we could be, I think, pretty close to having a, a stable short-term ingest workflow, but um, always worth having more conversations about that. Um, enable checks of metadata before ingest. Um, so this is something that we had talked about briefly and it was, it was uh, too complicated to do uh, quickly, um, but it would be something um, to, to talk about once we have a better idea of what Comet is, um, that it would be a good thing that we have some way of seeing the metadata before it gets ingested to know, um, you know, to actually you know, visually see how it's being interpreted uh, to make sure it's all being pulled in correctly and we can make changes before ingest. Um, so uh, we'll be waiting on comment to see how that folds into that. Um, we also wanna regularly add new resources. Um, and then uh, the should haves we have that we'd like to hold conversations about um, the relationship between shoreline and sills. So going forward as, as the shared um, ILS gets rolled out for the UC system, uh, there may be um, you know, some ways that uh, records could be shared and you know, how, do, how does that look and how does that work um, with multiple campuses. Um, we also wanna have conversations with, about accessibility with the UIUX folks at San Diego uh, to see uh, you know, if there's short-term things we can do or you know, how we should be um, paying attention to accessibility. Um, and it also came up with this, the shareholders, the stakeholders that, um, that they felt that, that more important than ingesting um, restricted data at this point is to start ingesting geotiffs. So that's the next priority that they would have for, for trying to get other types of material into to geo blacklight, it'd be geotiffs. Um, and then some other um, quicker fixes, I could say, uh, would be things like changing the find by to browse by category on the home page, um, change find by location to browse by location on the home page, um, add a button to browse all resources. Uh, and then the next two relate to ingesting geotiffs. And that's, you know, if we're gonna ingest geotiffs, then we need to have a way of previewing because geotiffs in most cases are gonna be scanned maps. Um, and so hopefully there was a way to preview um, scan maps and there's probably a different method, whether or not it's uh, georectified, whether or not it can be placed on the existing map interface or if it needs to be just a display window if it, if it has no spatial um, information. Um, so those are, are things we can discuss. Um, adding copyright use and reproduction rights fields. Um, again, that's being worked on with the GeoBlacklight community group. Uh, so we'll see um, how that relates. So most likely in the October, November, um, we wouldn't be doing anything unless there's some, some little thing. Um, uh, the next thing is to view the ISO or FGDC metadata in a human readable manner. Um, so it's, I'm not sure exactly how this uh, works. So it'd be good to figure out how that could be read. And then finally, an about page. 
and then it talks about what geo black what uh, geo data is. Any I went through those kind of quickly, but any um, questions or comments about those? Okay, so that's um, based on stakeholder feedback, what they're hoping to see coming up. Um, the next thing we did was we added QA, QC processes into the ingest workflow. Uh, so this is where, say for example, at UCSB, um, I prepare data and metadata, I put the files into box, um, and then we have a, a Kanban board where we can create tickets for an ingest, and then I put a link in that ticket uh, to box, and then move the ticket over into the uh, ready to ingest into staging column. And then Alex or one of the developers can ingest that into staging um, and then move that ticket over into the QC um, column. And then I can take a look at them in staging and see how they look. And if they look good, I can move the ticket over into prod and then Alex or another developer can ingest them into prod. And if there are problems, I can go back, fix the metadata, and we can uh, re-ingest into staging and make sure it's all right. And then once, so basically once everything is ready to go, then we'll just do you know one ingest into prod. Um, we also determined that um, a short-term storage solution uh, for the original objects um, wasn't necessary at this point. Um, it, it didn't make sense to do all the work to create that. Um, because the, the stakeholders really didn't feel that the users needed that original object um, as a, I mean, they, they need it eventually, but uh, it wasn't a major enough thing to, um, to warrant all the work it would take to develop something. And so we decided to defer that until, um, until Comet, until we can see what that looks like in relation to a dams or other storage location. Um, you know, there's lots of conversations to have locally at each campus about where objects are going to be stored. And then once we can figure out what that is, then we can um, adjust the ingest accordingly. Um, so, uh, so we did set out, we um, either accomplished them or they grew into larger things that, that are being either pushed up to the Geo Blacklight community or the larger uh, Surfliner group. So we made a lot of really good progress. Um, the only thing we weren't able to do is determine which of our shoreline tickets could potentially be part of Comet um, because we haven't seen the Comet white paper yet to know what the scope of Comet is. Uh, but that's something that we will probably do off cycle um, is you know, once, once we have some more information about what Comet is, we can um, start to figure out where that line is between shoreline and Comet and figure out which of these things that we we would like to have actually fall in the, the Comet um, product. And we can work with the Comet folks to incorporate that. And then the things that are not, we can make sure that we can uh, get those done within the, the shoreline um, product workflow. So all in all, it was a, I thought it was a really good sprint. I think we've had a really good work cycle this summer. This is the last of our four sprints. Um, and I think we've gotten a lot accomplished. Um, and uh, I think the, the things that we didn't get accomplished are because they're being um, made into broader issues and being you know, brought forward, so that's good. Um, and so, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we are at the moment. Are there any other um, comments, input, questions about the, uh, about the sprint or anything? Okay, well, great. Well, thank you very much. Um, and again, thanks for all your hard work during the sprint and uh, hope to see you uh, in our next work cycle, which is um, in October, November of 2020. So thank you very much.